Well, thanks for joining me. <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited. I have to show you um, my new hat that I just got. You I'm got pretty, one. I'm pretty thrilled about it. I saw it, um, I guess, on Instagram for your festival release. And uh, I was like immediately on Instagram, like who was going to get me this hat and our good friend Phil obliged and got it for me. So I'm very excited about it. So thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy you got you one. Amazing. I, I was literally so excited. I didn't even know what your movie was about or anything at the time. Like I had seen, you know, a couple posters, but I was like, hold on a second. We've got this lettering. We've got Oive. We've got Fangs. I was like, I'm all about this. I was very thrilled. So um, good. Yeah. thank you. Um, so of course the reason why I was so excited about that is because obviously seeing Jewish horror was really exciting for me. Um, Jewish horror comedy was really exciting for me as a Jewish horror fan. Tell me about making this movie. Did you set out to make a Jewish movie or did you set out to make a movie and just by virtue of who you are, it kind of spilled into it? Um, I, I, I mean, I think, uh, as, as my therapist says, both things are true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like that. Uh, I, um, you know, I, I think the big thing for me was when I realized that there was only going to be sort of, that I was going to have to be kind of honest in telling this story, which sounds really weird because it's about like a vampire dad and a vampire kid and there's vampire stuff that happens. Um, you know, a lot of it is just kind of trying to, you know, in movie genre horror format, just sort of deal with a lot of the stuff that I was dealing with becoming a father. And part of that was realizing that um, as much as, and as credible, as incredible and 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 um, supportive as my Shiksa wife is, um, it was going to be sort of up to me to kind of, you know, uh, uh, set the path for what my side of the family uh, uh, believes and, and where we're from and who we are. Um, and then we can all celebrate that. We get to join in together. As I said, I mean, we celebrate everything in this house. And and, uh, and so once I sort of did that, I realized, well, um, uh, I'm Jewish and my kids are being raised uh, with Jewish values. And my character is going to have Jewish heritage. And I should acknowledge that. And then, you know, Judaism, especially sort of the Americanized kind of modern cinematic Judaism tends to be very funny. It tends to lean into humor as much as it does tragedy. And I thought, well, that'll be good for a horror movie as well. Um, and so it just sort of was, was by happenstance that the thing that I identify with worked out really well, um, as the thing in the movie, as the, as the story in the movie for the character. Yeah. Do you find, um, and it might've been subconscious or even what you already touched upon, but do you think that your Judaism or how do you think your Judaism, Judaism informs your version of fatherhood? Well, uh, in reality or in the movie, I guess is the, is I guess the question. In the movie, but I'm asking about in the movie, but I know that there's a lot of you, you said that a lot of you was kind of in this movie. So maybe sort of your version of it, how it came, how it came out in the movie. Well, I definitely find myself as a father feeling more Jewish <laughs> and sort of leaning into it. And it also is a time, you know, we, we're sort of in a time of um, not unfortunately unprecedented, but of significant anti-Semitism and sort of a very vocal attack on, on Judaism, just as much as there's, you know, an attack on so many other people who, who uh, 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 are uh, marginalized and, and frequently uh, um uh, uh, mistreated and, 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 and called out for reasons of just existing. And I thought that was also very important. I thought, you know, that, that, and I, and I hope it's a generational thing. I think that, um, younger Jews, especially American Jews, um, are finding themselves at a time when they are being asked to sort of stand up and say, um, uh, uh, this won't stand just as much as we do that for women and for black people and for anyone else who uh, is being attacked for being themselves. And so I think, I think that, that I became a bit um, staunch about that when I became a father, I, I realized, well, 
you know, it's, it's not just about protecting myself. It's about protecting my kids now. And so I think, you know, to have made a movie where a character as a vampire who's immortal has dealt with that, um, uh, um, uh, in the most significant modern way through the Holocaust felt again, like it, it sort of unfortunately made sense. How important was it for you? I mean, obviously your movie talks about the Holocaust and the anti-Semitism that Francis experienced then. How important was it you, to you to present uh, modern casual anti-Semitism? Well, the movie sort of starts off with modern casual anti-Semitism and it's sort of done in a, um, it's sort of done in a, in a, I guess a subtle way, you know, um, uh, there's a character who uses the, the the word yid, which of course is a pejorative for Jews, um, but it's put into the context of yid-ish, which is a joke. Um, you know, I have friends who are half Jewish and refer to themselves as Jew-ish, right? And it's like, it's very funny. Um, and so I sort of started the movie with that kind of, again, to kind of plant the seed, like, is this casual? Is this not? And, you know, it's funny. It's like you talk to people who don't kind of go through the world often either living in a big city where there's lots of people like them or educated people or being able to pass as, you know, a wasp, let's say. Um, and they'll tell you, you know, I can tell when someone is vibing me with racism or transphobia or sexism like people generally know that sort of thing and i generally don't feel that right because i mean i wear a, a high and i and i you know but i i can pass you know i can change my voice a little bit and i can seem like a whatever like a normal white person and um and so again, I think that there was sort of this sense and the sense in the character that that's kind of what he's doing. That's kind of, he's sort of been code switching uh, uh, for a lifetime plus. Um, and so there isn't a ton of, I think, casual anti-Semitism in the movie with the exception that I just suggested, uh, although there is definitely a suspicion that is more rife among the people who we would tend to and who generally speaking statistically tend to be prejudiced versus people who are not <laughs> yes yeah i was like there was kind of that element of catharsis or like we're starting I'm trying to be a little diplomatic with my answers but yeah, i think we're all fine. picking up what i'm putting down here right yeah <laughs> yeah we're, we're in you know we, we're in a safe space um yes i also love i mean aside from just the catharsis of the immediate like oh i'm gonna bite you uh anti-semite um, I really love that you started the movie on a hard note of just like your first line was oy vey, which was, I was like, okay, I'm all in hundred percent with like klezmer music. I was like, I'm all in. Um, I was reading your combo with, I think Vanity Fair, where you talked about the difference between oy vey and oy gewalt, which I thought was so fun. Um, and I guess I'll direct people there, but was there any other Yiddish or there any other Yiddish phrases you kind of learned as you were putting the movie together or are there new ones to you that you were like really excited to include in the movie? Someone uh, uh, taught me, uh, uh, um, oh, I'm going to butcher it now, but it's um, uh, 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 Misa Mashina, which is mm. like like a really like, could we swear here? Is this okay? Yeah. This is Fangoria, Fangoria, right? We can swear. It's like, come fine. on. Yeah. Like it's like, this is a really people. fucked up situation is like, uh, like, this is just, this is a mess. Um, and I had not known that one before. Um but I think it also is like what you grew up with. Like I grew up with a lot of fakakta. Yeah. There was a lot of fakakta all around. There wasn't as much oy. There was a lot of fakakta. I think it took me till I was like in my thirties before I realized that like fakakta had like an R in it. Like I didn't realize that we were like <laughs> dancing it with a Yiddish accent. I was like, oh, it's F-E-R. I didn't expect that because um, I just said it so much. <laughs> <laughs> then there was stuff that I use every day that I didn't find in there. Like, um, uh, you know, we try to be environmentally conscious in the house. We don't use a lot of paper towels. We use some, but we have two little kids. And as you can imagine, the kitchen is often a mess. There are a lot of schmatas laying mm -hmm. around. And that's like, I think that might be like my favorite everyday casual Yiddish. We're, unfortunately, did not have room in the script for schmata. 
I love there's a neighborhood here that kind of used to be called Shmata Row. And it's funny hearing like non-Jews like try to name it that. Like they're always like, you know, Shmata Row. I'm like, the what? No, that's not how you say it. <laughs> um, what jokes, I mean, aside from all the Yiddish, what jokes do you think you slipped in there that you either left them there for just the Jews? Like this is a joke for the Jewish people. You're not going to get it. Or maybe were you kind of like, I'm not going to explain this one to you. Like you can figure this one out. Was there anything like that in there? My my favorite, uh, what I think of as a sort of Jewish vampire joke that is probably a, you know, you got to go a little circuitous to get there is, um, you know, there's all this vampire stuff in the movie that is kind of stuff we all know, right? You know, if he goes out in the sunlight, he burns and, you know, he's always schwitzing if he's, you know, trying to avoid the sunlight and, of course, fangs and, you know, drinking blood, all that normal good stuff. And then there's, you know, slightly deeper cuts, like we all know vampires have to be in invited in, right? Um, and that's like a big one. And we never find out what happens to our vampire if he's not invited in, but he's constantly asking to be let in and, you know, they let him in. Um, and sometimes we make a joke about it. And I, I always thought when I was writing it, that it was sort of the perfect Jewish neuroses. Like, I know this might be a problem, but I don't want to know. I don't want to find out what happened. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep asking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to, because, uh, this doesn't, uh, I don't want to, I don't want this smoke. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, uh, and so that very much came from a place of neuroses. Yeah. That, I like that. I was going to ask like, what other traits of a vampire do you think are actually like more analogous to everyday Judaism? I don't know if you got others, but I feel like that was already a really great answer. I think, you know, definitely needing to be, uh, needing to be invited in, um, you know, uh, let's see, what are some other, other good traits of vampires? I mean, you know, it's funny. I mean, so much of, of the movie I think touches on, um, not to get too dark, but touches on, uh, uh, obviously anti-Semitic tropes, right? We use Wagner through the movie, um, which we could talk about. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a deep, you know, connection to history, to the Holocaust. Um, and that's a, and that's a big, uh, and that's a big part of it. But of course, you know, it's hard to talk about Jews and blood and not talk about blood libel and talk about this sort of, you know, this, this, this thousands year old, uh, uh, violence against Jews that is directly related to, you know, the blood sucking Jew, the blood sucking vampire, the Eastern European other, I mean, you know, there's so much in there. And then of course now, you know, with the, there's, you know, there's, you know, this in, you know, completely, uh, uh, absolutely abhorrent, you know, Q phenomena, the, pizza gate and all of that this sort of idea that you know the jews uh, are going to come and steal your children and drink their blood and yeah. so uh you know i wanted to touch on that obviously i wanted to kind of face that head on as well yeah i mean i i could talk about like that specific thing for probably this entire time but i was really struck by that i mean this scene um where Jane visits her mother's cousin and there's crosses everywhere, to me was making like a very bold statement that Judaism is new for her too. And so obviously we've got vampirism as a stand-in for Judaism in a lot of ways. Like this is, I have to teach her these two very important things about her bloodline. And I guess I'm so curious sort of how those two things came intertwined for you and sort of what that meant for you to adapt an anti-Semitic trope about us into how you how you built this character and built this story well uh uh there are smarter people than me such as uh a friend of mine uh adam lowenstein who's a professor at university of pittsburgh who teaches film studies and he's on the board of the george romero foundation one of the great filmmakers who who also much smarter than me than made a lot of, of work <laughs> yes, and 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 did a lot of work on um, uh, uh, on otherness in his films uh, and 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 inclusion and sort of speaking on what it is you know to to deal with racism and sexism and ageism in film. Um, but Adam, uh, uh, Professor Lowenstein, wrote the book on otherness and horror, which is a great book that touches on uh, Judaism and 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 other. Um, 
isms that we are all a part of and how those relate to uh, to horror. But, you know, I think uh, um, the idea of going through your life being treated as or called a monster and then being able to embody the real, real, the genuine monster facade is empowering, right? I mean, all of this is like ways that you say, how am I going to empower myself? How am I going to connect with other people that maybe aren't Jewish, aren't like me, but they felt this way, right? Because once you do that, once you're able to sort of say, hey, I felt this way and you feel this way, well now, and nobody likes this. So how do we ensure that neither of us feel this way ever again? Now, all of a sudden you've got, you know, you, you've got a coalition. Now, all of a sudden, even though, you know, you are a different sexual orientation or a different race, or, you know, you are a different gender than, but we still have a thing that we can, we can rally around and, 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 and evil to combat. And, and, you know, that to me just sort of was the, that was the way in my Judaism was the way in to what I hope is a universal sentiment that is such a huge, part of horror. It's such a huge part of genre, right? Is like, I am an outsider. How do I fit in? I am an outsider. I'm being, I'm being punished for it. How do I fight back? How do I empower myself? Right. And of course, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of cultures, especially Jews figured out that they have to be able to laugh and cry at the same time. And so to be able to sort of I don't know, put that, you know, put a dad joke next to a vampire sucking blood felt like a great opportunity to do that. Yeah, I felt that a lot in the part where um, your conversation about uh, or your character's conversation uh, about being turned in the Holocaust is kind of spliced with the really hammy Josh Rubin performance. To me, that just felt like we're talking tragedy and then over the top comedy, just like completely mashed together, which I just feel like is so much the Jewish experience. Um, talk to me about that. What, where did it come from or why was it important to bring the sort of Holocaust into your story and how did that kind of work and, and kind of come to be? I sort of had a, a moment of, uh, I don't know. Um, I had a moment where I sort of, I think as I was becoming comfortable with and realizing like this, this guy's a Jew and I'm a Jew and this is a sort of, you know, a Jewish story where I kind of realized, you know, uh, you got to go all in. Like the whole point, I mean, you know, what do we say? We say never forget. Like, you know, when, when you educate or are educated on Jewish history and modern Jewish history, the Holocaust, you, you know, educators and professors and museum directors, they don't mince words. You know, it is it is taken very seriously. It is taken um, uh, to be a, no, no one is sugarcoating it. And so I felt like if I was going to go there, I shouldn't sugarcoat it. I should actually, and, you know, unfortunately, I mean, one of the things that, that, that is, has always fascinated me uh, that is, of course, very dark and very tragic is, you know, the relation between Nazism and occultism. And, you know, we've seen it in Raiders of the Lost Ark and um, uh, and Hellboy. Um, and it's been done in a very entertaining way, which I don't think is a bad thing. Again, I, th I don't think that using entertainment to talk about real horror, real evil is a bad thing. I think that's something that horror movies do and should do. And so um, I think I connected with that. And I connected with this idea that there were these incredibly, incredibly evil things that were done in sort of this fantastical uh, uh, imaginary sense and then perpetrated. And I thought, well, what if they were perpetrated? Which, of course, is again the conceit of you know, there's I'm, I'm not the first person to make that conceit, um, but I thought that it uh, uh, it might be an actual scary thing, which it is, which we should face. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned Wagner, um, and of course, I already mentioned the klezmer music. Talk to me about the music in your film. Switching gears well, a little, but don't worry, I we'll mean, switch back. Big ups to Bob Allaire, our incredible composer, um, who is not a Jew um, and had not worked uh, much in klezmer music, but 
you know, once I, I, I started talking to him about it, I mean, he's such an incredible uh, composer and, and musician that he got right on board um, and was really excited about it. And we just got to dive deep, especially into modern Klezmer, which I didn't know about. I just knew Klezmer from sort of the kind of, you know, the, the, I don't know, the, the hits, I don't know. Are there hits? Are there Klezmer hits? Domain free. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I just thought, you know, I thought it's, it's, I mean, it's fun music, it's party music. It's, um, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it felt like in a way it kind of dovetailed into, uh, the punk rock music, which is kind of the music that the kid listens to Jane, who's played by Victoria Morales, uh, who's, who plays my daughter. She's like, she's like, I was, she's like a teenage punk rocker. And it's like, well, she's listening to punk rock music the whole time. I thought Klezmer was kind of. I don't know, sort of fit the bill to connect to her, to connect to, to Francis's culture. And, um, you know, as far as the, um, as far as the Wagner goes, I mean, it's so funny because you talk to people about it and they go, do you know that Wagner was an anti-Semite? And I go, yes, I did know that. Yes. I've what heard. do you think? I've heard and, about um, it at every uh, wedding I've been to since I was um, six. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, some may say the second most famous anti-Semite. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, is I'm a huge opera fan. And, um, and I'm a huge fan of The Ring Cycle, which is this incredible suite of operas that Wagner wrote that are this, these epic stories um, that inspired Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and, you know, and, and, and so much fantasy and sci-fi that we... Um, that we enjoy today. Um, and of course, you know, Ride of the Valkyrie and all of these, you know, incredibly cinematic uh, uh, pieces of music. Um, and I love those stories and I love those operas. And uh, I don't think that they belong to hatred. Um, and I think that, you know, there's a world, there's a version, there's a backstory to like my movie where, um, I don't know, it was 1934 and this guy was listening to Wagner because he liked listening to opera. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, six months later, he realizes that this thing is being used as a weapon against him. And I, and I thought, fuck that. <laughs> like, no, like I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to reclaim this and, you know, and I'm, and I'm going to, you know, and I, and I think, you know, to sort of have it be contextualized as this like kind of man out of time, which is what our vampire is. Um, and to be sort of representative of this thing that was turned against him. You know, I, I again, that was sort of, I don't know. That was a, sort of a horror movie moment was like, what happens when you think this thing that you love doesn't love you back? You know, it's sort of like that spooky. Right. Um, and, um, and so that was the, the impetus for, for the ring. I think that's so interesting. Cause that's such a modern experience. Like how many times have, you know, you seen that post about some writer you loved and people are letting you know that they were anti-Semitic and you're like, oh, and you have to like reflect on that. And how did that inform their writing? And am I okay with that? So I think that's very, that's deep. Yeah. And that's something that I think we all have to, like, we all go through today, as you said, sort of like, you know, in, in, in a, in a sort of, you know, in a modern way, you know, we look back at filmmakers that we've loved or musicians that we've loved or at least considered to be brilliant and you go like well that guy was such a piece of shit I don't even know him. and the funny thing is is that I think about them now and I go with a lot at least a lot of them I'm like I didn't really like that stuff to begin with and, um, and, it wasn't so hot yeah you know and uh, but then occasionally you get a couple that you're like wait I still really like that movie and I don't know if that movie is reflective of this person being a bad person um you know and and am I allowed to claim it as something that may help me make something good right to inspire me to do something that isn't shitty um and so all of that kind of went into uh the Wagner use <laughs> I like that. Um, speaking of the potentially negative influences, what were your positive influences and not necessarily on this movie, but like in general, who are your horror comedy, uh, your Jewish horror comedy or horror slash comedy uh, influences? Well, you may have heard of a uh, young up and coming. Uh, 
I don't know, multi-hyphenate, really, a guy by the name of Mel Brooks, I'm familiar. Um, yeah. who uh, uh, has had some success and, and at least some experience with uh, mixing genre and comedy. Um, of course, Dracula Dead and Loving It um is is the is the number one up there uh but no i mean you know mel, mel brooks um you know albert brooks for that matter i mean i'm a huge albert brooks fan didn't hasn't done a lot of uh genre but uh, uh i'm i'm just a huge fan of his uh, as a filmmaker and a comedian and sort of a social commentarian um you know uh obviously in sort of modern day i mean you know everybody i think who is looking to sort of speak on uh on inclusion within genre is looking to the the master right now jordan and um and sort of saying you know how how do you tell these stories um about your personal experiences or your personal fears or your history within the context of a genre sandbox you know um and then on top of that you know romero um and of course romero made martin um but you know, it's funny. I mean, I don't know. Can you think of a lot of Jewish comedy genre filmmakers? I mean, you could argue the Coens, right? I mean, I, I yeah. think, but the Coens haven't really done a, I don't know, done a, a horror movie. Not like a straight horror movie, no. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't know. I would, I would have to say it's like one or the other. I don't know that we get a ton of Jewish horror comedies. Yeah, maybe like I'm here, folks. Yeah, here I know. Here we go. <laughs> this, is it. this is the moment. Um, okay, turning us a little bit back um to our conversations earlier about Nazis. Um, talk to me about the watch in the movie. Talk to me about what it kind of means, and then also um extrapolate a bit on the line where the uh, pawn shop uh, proprietor uh, says Nazi stuff is always big or has always been big, something like that. Well, uh, I'm I'm a I'm a collector of wristwatches it's like a hobby of mine and so i know too much about this esoteric thing wristwatches and and i like them because i like history and i like design and i like sort of how history and design and and as we say provenance where something came from can impact what it is and um you know along with many technological advancements uh the germans made very good functional wristwatches and those wristwatches uh are very sought after today um they go for tens of thousands of dollars a a uh, uh and there were a, a bunch of companies in the movie i say alonga and sune which was one of them um you can buy an alonga and sune watch today brand new they cost fifty thousand dollars or something these are like very high end you know i don't know who's buying these things i'm not but the um uh, but the ones that they made for for germany during the war are you know out there they're very sought after and there were a couple other manufacturers that made them and i thought you know this was the kind of thing that he would have he would have gotten it from a i don't know a victim and uh and been wearing it ever since and you know might be aware that it's worth a lot of money and that he could pawn it um and then you know when the pawn shop owner says uh, Nazi shit is huge, always ha has been, you know, I think, um, that is a bit of gallows humor, of course, but I also think that there is a, uh, I don't want to say a fetish, but I think that there's a, uh, fascination that people have that connects them to, um, you know, uh, uh, Nazi memorabilia, without necessarily always thinking of the reality of it. And then of course there's people who are just straight up like not, there's a lot of still Nazis. There's a lot of people who are like, I like this shit because it represents something I believe in, which is the dark side of that joke, right? The really dark side of that joke is um, people like this. I, it was funny. I knew someone once who, whose father was a world war II reenactor. And so on the weekends they would get together and he would dress up like an old GI and he had like an old, you know, Willie's Jeep, like a U.S. Army Jeep, and he would drive it and they would reenact stuff from World War II. And he had a whole garage full of like authentic World War II memorabilia and costumes and stuff. And I remember he was showing it to me once and um, and he said, yeah, I know you think this is weird, right? That I would do all of this and that I'd have all this stuff. And he goes, just consider this. There's guys who are doing the other side. 
And so, you know, meaning that there's some guy on the other side of town whose garage is just full of Nazi shit. And so I thought, of course, that was crazy and insane and very funny and uh, and all of those things and scary. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think I channeled that story for that moment in the movie. I like that. Speaking on the quote heavier stuff, the conversation with the um with his old friend, Francis's old friend, who's the black woman uh, hematologist. Hematologist? Did I make yeah. that up? Um, I was curious if you were maybe tapping into the idea of the allyship between black people and Jewish people in kind of the times of like Jim Crow and the in World War II. Was that maybe I think you're giving me too much credit? Okay, um, I don't know. I think... <laughs> maybe I'm just really no, I thinking about it. that right now. I appreciate it. I mean, I, I I'll take it if it's a positive. Uh, yes, I meant to do that. Of course, is the answer. I knew for, it. Uh, anything good? Thank you. Yes, glad you caught that. Um, you know, I thought obviously that this guy, you know, he he needed a friend. He needed someone who was helping him and sort of representing a familial relationship, so that he wasn't just a total ghost, a total shell. And so I thought, well, it has to be somebody we met a long time ago and they've got a relationship and, um, and, uh, and that kind of was the impetus for, for, for Sylvie. And of course her being a, you know, I, I imagine she was young, she was in her early twenties and she was a hematology resident. And of course that made it so she could help him get blood and not have to eat her, um, and, uh, and create a friendship. Um, you know, I mean, I would love to look at it as 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 allyship and i think that there's a lot of allyship throughout the movie right there's a lot of people who are friendly who i would like to think are friendly um not because of their race or their ethnicity or, or creed um but because they are friendly people and um on the underside of that i think is i hope an implicit idea that 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 we should look to people who, again, have maybe felt a little bit like us at times. We've all felt this same feeling, and from that we can find allyship. So maybe there is an undercurrent of sort of safety amongst people who may understand how you feel or may understand what you're afraid of. Yeah, 100%. Um, what Yiddishisms got cut out? Were you ever going to name this movie something to do with Mishpacha? Were you ever going to call the meat flesh? Like, what else? <laughs> what did we No. Know? None of that. No, none no, of that. Um, <laughs> none of that. No, I um I wish I could take credit for the title. Uh, but uh my um my lovely wife, who is a better writer than I will ever be, read the script and said, Well, it's called Blood Relatives, isn't it? And I said, Yes, of course. It's called Yes, of course. I, I thought it. of that. I had thought of that before you thought. No. Um she 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 thought it right up. So thank you, Allison. Um uh, uh, but there was no, um, no, there was no, and I'm surprised I didn't use Mishpuka. They should have used Mishpuka. You know, it's funny when I was writing it. And then when I was shooting it, I didn't think there was so much like Yiddish or Jewishness in the movie. And then we're editing the movie and I was like, oh, wow, I've really, I've really quadrupled down on this shit, huh? Like this is me, huh? Okay. okay. And it's funny because you see it in Victoria's in Victoria's performance too, where it's like, I would get into the edit and I'd be like, you know, cause we'd perform and we'd do a take and I'd be like, oh yeah, that's great. You know, and you, you know, you do something enough and you go like, I know we, we hit it, right? We did the right thing. I didn't realize there's like times it feels like she's doing like an impression of me. She's doing like an old Jewish man a little bit. And I was like, yeah, it's so, I mean, I think a little bit goes a long way as I guess the answer to my question, to your question. Yes. It was great. I like, again, like, I'm like, oh, let's, you know, check this, uh, this Jewish horror comedy out. And it was like immediately with the music, immediately hit me with the Oyve. And I was like, we're going for it. We are going all the way. This movie is unapologetic. So very, I we leaned in. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, well, we're getting near to the end. So I just have to quickly simply ask you, what is your favorite scary movie? Ooh, uh, it's a big question. I mean, my, 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 my favorite vampire movie is probably ganja and Hess, oh, which i don't know how scary it is if it's like you know so shocking uh but it is a great movie about um in their case a a a, a black vampire experience and sort of black culture and um 
very much sort of couched in the 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 era of its time. It's a great '70s uh, uh, exploitation film, black exploitation film made by black people about vampires and and touches on a lot of the same themes that our movie touches on i hope i mean it's it's sort of a masterpiece movie along with that you know near dark was a big inspiration um trouble every day which depending on who you talk to is or is not a vampire movie claire denis it's a masterpiece um martin george romero again um you know a movie that talks a lot about catholicism and vampirism which is the more common religious association cultural association but um a great movie about otherness in vampirism. I like it. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for chatting, for kibitzing with oh, me. Thank you. Today about all. Thank you. Yes, I know kibitz. I know we we didn't. Yeah, we didn't even have a chance to use all of our Yiddish. Oh, yeah, um, all the like the background storage, all the words that you learn over time that not everyone else knows. <laughs> but yes. Thank you. This was so much fun. Um, I appreciate it. Your movie's so fun. It's on Shutter. Check it out, everybody. It's so great. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.